everyone. Uh, very excited to be here today on the community call. And quick introduction, um, I'm Giselle and I work in sales and I like to click buttons. And that typically terrifies most IT organizations, but today I'm gonna to tell you how, how it had the potential to create kind of a power platform revolution and the journey that I've kind of gone through through this particular adventure of learning power platform. So everyone has like the favorite thing they've ever built, their pride and joy. And this is that for me. And it's a bit of a spaghetti mess on the, on the screen, but we're going to walk through this and kind of how it came to life. But in order to do that, it's really important to go back to the beginning. And the beginning has kind of been my development journey, the lessons learned, and why sales was key in bringing that particular flow to life. So prior to getting into the technology industry, um, I worked at my family's donut shop. So started there when I was about 14. Um, I worked at an apartment uh, management company, uh, leasing apartments, and I sold clothes at Nordstrom. So not really a technical background at all, but um, everything that I've done has always been tied to commission. So, you know, any of the different things, the more I sold, the more money I made. So that was a real motivator for me. And there was also the sense of accomplishment that I was able to have these quick wins that were able to say that, hey, I was good at my job. So I did everything that I could to maximize my success. And I was actually really good at it. So the secrets to some of my success other than being an Aries and being naturally competitive, is to actually learn the products and actually learn the products that I'm selling. So when I got into the technology industry, my last company was a Microsoft Gold partner. So I was like, okay, I need to learn more about what Microsoft has and what their offerings are and what I can tell my customers about. So I was always just kind of taking my time in my evenings and weekends or anything to be able to educate myself on the different products. And very shortly thereafter, I stumbled across this Microsoft Flow online conference in 2019 on YouTube. And it was a great format, you know, kind of started from the beginning of people who don't know anything and kind of got more complex throughout the day. So I watched quite a bit of it. And there was a couple of things that really stuck with me about how easy it was to build these automation flows and how impactful they can really be for a particular organization. So I was thoroughly impressed and thought it was the coolest thing ever and went back to my company the next day and said, pretty please, can I have this? Can we do this? Can we have it? for myself or for my customers and was told that we didn't have the skill set to execute those features so wouldn't be deploying them so not to tell my customers about it so as a salesperson i said well if i can't sell it then i'll kind of forget that it even exists but as my career progressed and I left that company and went to another company, more and more of these manual processes in the sales world would come in and really kind of impact and take away my ability to sell and my ability to produce for the company. So I really thought, well, like, I can do this. Like, I watched the YouTube video in 2019. Like, why can't I really take a look at this and build these automation flows myself? So I went back to YouTube that was my source of information and searched for more detail around this flow thing, which I learned was now called Power Automate uh, years later, and within two days had written my first flow. And it was super simple, but one of the use cases that we had was our marketing team needs to get contact information from our customers. So what we would do is we would get emails from our customers and we would go manually enter it into a CRM system somewhere. And for the most part, I never did that because it was boring and took too much time. So I created this Power Automate flow where when a new email arrived to my inbox, if the domain matched my customer domain, then I stored the information in the SharePoint list. And we literally went from tracking maybe like a dozen contacts in a particular quarter to getting like 400 plus contacts in a quarter because it was automatically happening. So it was really exciting to see the value that we got from being able to have such a simple flow implemented for my customer base. So, of course, being a seller and what sellers do is sell things is I really started running around and 
telling everyone about how amazing this was and how this flow that I, as a non-technical person, built had such an impact for our organization. And I thought I was pretty much the coolest person ever to be able to do that. So I ran around kind of telling everyone at the company, well, you need Power Automate, you need Power Automate. And I showed my peers what I could do, um, taught them how easy it was, helped them implement it for themselves. And they started kind of coming back to me saying, well, that's cool that you can get their email address, but can you get their first and last name? Can you track more than one customer? Can it track meetings? Can it put away my laundry? Like, you know, all of these different things. And I really took it as kind of like a challenge to say, well, I'm gonna learn more about this. And I wanna accomplish all these requests that are coming in from my team and make this even more impactful than it ever could be that I ever imagined. So I really built this ecosystem of flows where let me focus on the part of the job that I loved. So started really you know, studying and diving in and getting involved in the community and different user groups and be, started being able to develop some flows that we're starting to be able to use by some of our global teams, like 200 plus people were now starting to install these flows. And it came, became the birth of that most complex flow that I ever sh uh, built showing you at the beginning. So the way that we look at that particular one is that most organizations have prospecting days. So days where their sales teams go out and they call customers and try to generate new business. And people are incentivized with like points and prizes and recognition for building in or bringing in potential business. But the thing about them is they usually require a lot of manual work. So tracking your calls, tracking your emails, tracking your opportunities, entering all that stuff in to get, to get points. So the first time that I did that, you know, the first event, event one, perform an activity and then manually entered it into the CRM. And that took forever. Um, so I said, well, they have the next event, the next six months later, I was like, well, I need to figure out a better way to do this. So I performed all the individual activities, like 700 different things in a day. And then I got a group of my friends and we entered them all at the same time. That also didn't work. So by the time event three came through, I said, well, I'm learning all this stuff about Power Automate. Like, why can't we just automate that? So took the steps for it where um, I wanted to be able to say, well, I wanna send a lot of emails to these customers because if I get a point for each email that I send, I can build a Power Automate flow to send custom emails to those contacts in a short period of time. So I was able to build this automation flow uh, manually triggered to be able to send up to like 3000 emails in a day. So before, like if somebody just got like 700 points, it was huge. So now I was able to get people to get like 3000 points with a click of a button and it was able to massively increase our productivity. So then I was like, well, how do I track all of these different points? So I was able to create a Office 365 group email address that I CC'd on all of these different activities, initialize a bunch of variables, but then be able to say anytime something arrived, like an email arrived or a meeting arrived to that group's email address to parse out all the information, get all of the things that I needed and have it automatically uh, put those into the points leaderboard and assign user points. So it was really like a huge, huge benefit to all of our day to days to be able to get all of that stuff automatically tracked. So what that kind of ended up happening is me going through and selling the solution. So I was like, I've built all of this stuff. Now leadership, like we need to take a look at this. And bonus points to anyone who actually knows what video game this is from, because it's my favorite of all time and I've been trying to beat it since 1995. But back to the story. Um, so I sold the organization or, or um, organizers of the event on trying my automation flow for a couple hundred people within the company and pretty much spent the whole rest of the preparation time trying to solidify the automation flow to make sure that it worked. And uh, the video game is actually Dungeon Master 2 Legends of Skull Keep. So um, any guesses on kind of what happened from the particular, uh, the particular day of the event? I was going through and trying to say, hey, this is how you're gonna benefit, this is how you're gonna benefit, this is how you're gonna benefit, and said, okay, well now I have to like actually make that happen and shock everyone into like success. 
and learned through it that failure is a really important part of this scientific endeavor because we ended up running into some pretty significant challenges. One is that, um, you know, the flow to send the thousands of emails with a click of a button, plus the Office 365 Group's mail connector didn't end up working because that connector could only handle up to 100 requests every 60 seconds. So a lot of people that were taking advantage of the automation or weren't able to see success in those particular point activities. So, but what I really found out is like, you know, user experience is key. So I would just freeze up, uh, almost cry whenever people were coming up with it. I would turn off the frozen flow, duplicate a new flow, figuring out those timestamps, manually add the activities because I wanted to make sure that everyone was excited about automation and it was going to work the way that I told them it was going to. And with that, we were able to like kind of celebrate because even though I was scrambling on the back end to make it work, everyone else's user experience definitely improved through that. And they were excited about what that Power Automate was able to bring to them. So at that point, I was like, well, we need to really move forward with this and get more people excited about automation. And for myself, I needed to really kind of learn and grow and figure out, you know, how can I make this better? So I ended up doing a V2 of the track all the points thing where we were able to kind of use an HTTP GET connection instead of the Office 365 Group's mail connector. We were able to auto tag a bunch of information. We were able to get more uh, detail and create a Power BI dashboard that was able to provide live updates on all of this for everyone. So it was really this whole thing where I was able to kind of create journeys based on the user feedback and really kind of benefit from everything. Um, and again, this is kind of what that ended up turning into. And there's still some different challenges in it. Like if there's double quotes in the subject lines that ended up failing the run, you know, something that I wouldn't have thought, because like really who puts double quotes in their subject lines? Um, but that was something that I learned and had to fix for or doing an Excel lookup of the domains caused performance lag. So, you know, kind of slowly moving these things forward and, you know, our V3 will probably have those things solved for. So continuing to kind of move forward on all of those. So what I really learned is that, you know, these big type of achievements come one step at a time, one day at a time. And that anyone really has the power to solve the problems and take control of their own productivity and get hundreds of people excited about it just based on their user experience and solving these problems. So realistically, things to kind of remember is that every role is a sales role. You know, you need to sell people on the solutions that you're building. Um, users want to learn and be part of the solution. Like I got 200 people to install their very first automation flow just by a crazy idea that I had. And don't let perfect get in the way of the good, of good. You know, these incremental changes that we have to flows, they're going to happen over time. So get something out there and you can always fix it along the way. And that anyone, even a salesperson like myself, can make a giant impact within an organization. So give everything a try. And um, yeah, so the, pretty much that's it. And thank you all so much for listening to the story of me being a salesperson that likes to click buttons. Awesome. Thanks, Giselle. Uh, keep up that slide for a moment, but I just wanted to highlight the value of this. You're seeing we're doing a uh, kind of a progression of, of stories today. We're going to get into a technical one with Natty in a moment. But the value here, friends, is that as passionate as we all are around the tech and the features, uh, if our leadership doesn't understand the value of it, it could cure cancer. But if they don't understand that, then they're not going to empower you to do more with the features and functionalities and the technology that you love. So I think what we're learning here with this presentation is how to sell that to your leadership, how to empower them to understand the value that's brought with embracing technologies and allowing you to do more with the Power Platform. So it's important that we consider all aspects of that on uh, calls like this uh, to ensure that everyone has an understanding and is equipped to be able to do more with the power platform uh, and the technology they love. So Giselle, thank you for sharing that uh, story and the steps you took because those are practical and implementable uh, and encourage you all to go back and, and watch the recording when it's available and maybe take some notes and see where you might be able to put that into action in your organization because it's very empowering. So thank you, Giselle. Mm -hmm.